Hello everyone and welcome to game 9 of the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Boris Vasilyevich Spassky and Robert James Fischer. Now if you've been with us so far you know that uh, the result is uh, currently 5-3 uh, to three in Fischer's favor and it's not like 5-3 to three is uh, unreachable for Spassky. Uh, the problem is Spassky won the first two games. He won the first game with Fischer blundering that uh, bishop uh, and the sec second game was uh, forfeited by Fischer without playing uh, a single move. Uh, so out of the next six games uh, Spassky only... Uh, uh, got two draws and Fisher has won four games. So that's, um, you know, psychologically that's a pretty big uh, b big hit to take uh, and uh, Spassky requ requested a timeout. Uh, each of the players uh, has uh, the option of... Uh, postponing the match three times so Spassky is now requesting one although he didn't want to he didn't want it to seem like uh, uh, like the one Ben Larson used when he said uh, he was suffering from uh, altitude sickness you know of high blood pressure uh, or uh, like uh, Tigran Petrosin asked for a timeout due to some um, nervous uh, nervousness and anxi anxiety so Spassky uh, had uh, an official note issued from his doctor uh, but uh, the American Chess Federation requested to see this note. And this is something uh, that uh, the quote about the board says. How about that? It was a title in the newspapers, uh, not the newspapers, in the American radio station uh, where they uh, said, uh, you know, what is this now? Spassky is now losing it now. He's requesting a timeout uh, because something definitely has to be done here. And there were rumors that uh, Geller was recalled to Moscow. Uh, he had to explain the current situation in the match and so on and so on. So um, uh, there, uh, there was um, uh, still drama to this match. Uh, during game 8 there were uh, cameras rolling uh, in the room uh, in the playing hall. But Fischer didn't know about them. So Fischer only found out that the cameras were recording after, the ma after uh, game 8. And then he again uh, was uh, very angry and then he was again threatening to leave the match. Uh, even though uh, by this point he's now winning 5-3, to three, no one was actually uh, considering that he would actually leave. Uh, but, you know, every game uh, there's uh, this struggle. Will the cameras be on? Where, where will the cameras be? Uh, uh, will they be there without uh, Fisher noticing them like there were in game 8? So they really have to... Uh, Chester Fox really had to fi fi figure this out if he wanted to get his uh, m money's worth. Uh, also, uh, as Gligorich mentions in his book, uh, Jerry Weintraub, the former promoters or a promoter of Elvis Presley, was in town. And also uh, Sid Bernstein, a one-time manager of Beatles. And uh, uh, Mr. Jerry Weintraub, a promoter of Elvis Presley, said that uh, even though he had no idea who Fisher was like a week ago, uh, now it seems like uh, Fisher is like this superstar and uh, everyone in the world knows about him. Uh, which, in fact, w was the case. And he said that he, he he's never seen... Uh, anyone rise from let, let's say nobody to uh, to <laughs> to a superstar this fast, you know? Uh, and he was the promoter of Elvis Presley, so that was that's very interesting. Uh, so yeah. Uh, they did say that Fisher <laughs> Fisher will be the first uh, real American uh, millionaire uh, that that comes from chess, which was uh, unthinkable. You know, uh, a lot of chess players, a lot of chess champions, uh, spent their entire lives in poverty. So this was definitely something new to the to the whole game. Uh, but okay, that being said, uh, let's return to the game. Uh, F uh, Spassky has the white pieces, and he opens with d4. So returning to his original uh, pre-match idea. Knight to f6, we have c4 and e6. Fischer again goes for this timid line, uh, preparing the queen's gambit declined, and uh, he doesn't go for g6, the uh, king's Indian defense, because he simply doesn't have to just yet. Uh, so, okay, c4, e6, we have knight to f3, and now d5. Uh, if it was... Um, like a really important game that Fischer had to win, uh, most likely he would have gone for c5, the Benoni defense, but here uh, Fischer transposes into the queen's gambit declined. Uh, we have knight to c3, and now comes bishop, uh, sorry, c5. Bishop to b4 uh, was played uh, in game number one, and uh, uh, we all know how that turned out. Here, uh, c5 was played, and uh, again, uh, as Spassky is really an expert with both black and white pieces in this line, uh, Fischer is yet again challenging Spassky to his knowledge of theory. c captures on d5, we have knight captures on d5, and now e4. Uh, here, Fischer allows this uh, very sharp line with e4. Uh, Spassky uh, defeated uh, Tigran Petrosin in 1969 in the World Chess Championship match uh, in this line, so uh, Fischer definitely has something up his sleeve. Uh, we'll just have to see what it is. 
uh, knight captures on c3, we have b captures on c3, and now c captures on d4. c captures on d4, and now comes knight to c6. Uh, the most popular line was bishop to b4 check here, but uh, black didn't really get any good results here. So instead, Fisher goes knight to c6, and it's very interesting, again, Fisher goes for a line uh, that was played with the black pieces by Spassky II and Nikolai Krogius. Uh, Krogius had this position against Platonov in Leningrad in 1971. So again, it seems like Fischer is testing Spassky. Are you <laughs> carefully listening to, to what Krogius is suggesting uh, before the game? Uh, so okay, knight to c6 and bishop to c4. A very active square for Spassky's bishop that will at some point allow Spassky uh, to execute this uh, central thrust with d5. Uh, and this is move 10. Uh, sorry, this is move 9, and here on move 9, Fisher uh, unleashes yet another novelty. Here, Fisher plays b5. Uh, b5 is, uh, well, of course, you're not going to capture it. If you capture it, queen to a5 wins the bishop. Uh, it's uh, not not a very deep idea. Uh, but uh, what Fisher plans to do with this b5 move, he wants to... Uh, at least uh, get this bishop to a, to a, a less a less active square, uh, for example d3 or e2, and then he will be able to start to developing his queen side. Uh, if you go bishop uh, back to b3, then bishop to b b4 check is coming, and uh, black will definitely get a lot of activity. So Spassky goes to bishop to d3. Uh, bishop to e2 is also a possibility, but here it's uh, you can't win a pawn or something if you capture here. Uh, then knight captures on d4. And now you cannot capture because bishop captures on b5 wins the queen, but bishop to b4 check first uh, doesn't help you because king to e2 is coming. And again, you cannot capture because of the same idea uh, you would lose your queen. Uh, so after bishop to, d th bishop to d3, we have bishop to b4 check by Fisher. Uh, bishop to d2 blocking, and now bishop captures. Queen captures on d2, and now comes a6. Uh, here, uh, Fisher defends his b5 pawn, he's ready to play bishop to b7, and it seems like all uh, is well for black. Black managed to uh, nicely develop, and he will not have any problems developing his light square bishop, which is uh, most often the case. Uh, the biggest problem uh, when you play the queen's uh, queen's gambit decline is uh, what to do with your light square bishop. Uh, so here, Spassky immediately tries to break this uh, uh, queen side uh, pawn chain with a4, attacking uh, b5. Uh, but also a very a very interesting idea was d5. And now after e captures e captures, uh, you have to figure out what to do. Capturing the the pawn would uh, seems would give uh, White a lot of activity after castles. Uh, now you have to figure out uh, how to go about this. Uh, go about this. Uh, the, the rooks are coming into the game, uh, and it it would be it would be pretty dangerous. Uh, you cannot castle just yet because bishop captures uh, on h7 would win you the queen. So uh, black would black would have some problems here. Uh, but after e captures on d5, you could go for something like knight to a5, uh, and now after queen to e3 check queen e7 and now castle. Uh, you would still prevent black from castling, uh, and black would have to figure out what to play here. So this would definitely be an uh, okay I idea for white. Uh, of course, if you capture the queen, then f captures on e3, and now white has uh, a very nice central pawn structure. Uh, but okay, Spassky has a different idea. Instead of this uh, central thrust, uh, he goes for a4. Uh, we have castles by Fisher, uh, a very nice move, as now pawn captures on b5 will be met with knight captures on d4. Now this is definitely possible, since uh, the king is safely tucked away here on g8. Uh, now after queen e3, attacking the knight, knight captures, uh, queen captures on f3, and now simply uh, rook to b8. Uh, and now if bishop captures on a6, Fisher wouldn't uh, mind giving up this pawn, even allowing such a very strong pass pawn, uh, because now rook to b3 will start a very nice attack for black. If a7, rook, a bishop to b7 is coming uh, with a nice double attack against this d3 bishop, uh, and a very nice monster bishop on b7, uh, this would uh, definitely be uh, compensation enough for the past a7 pawn. So, you don't really want to allow such an attack uh, uh, to Fisher f for the price of one pawn. So uh, after castles, we have queen to c3 by Spassky, uh, moving the queen out of the way uh, with uh, an attack against Fisher's knight on c6. Uh, bishop to b7, a nice developing move, also uh, defending the knight on c6, and now comes a capture on b5. A capture on b5, and now castles. Uh, Gligoric mentions in his book that uh, perhaps capturing the rook would have been better here, uh, but uh, the, the engine actually likes Fisher's idea as well. Uh, so simply, castles, um, 
uh, here Spassky castles and queen to b6. Uh, we have rook a to b1, now piling up on that b5 pawn, and now simply b4, attacking the queen. Queen moves to d2, and now Fisher captures on d4, knight captures on d4. Uh, it seems like a better idea, perhaps, to keep the tension and uh, proceed with uh, pushing the pass pawn to b3, uh, but it would be all the same. If b3, then queen to b2, you can pile up uh, against the b3 pawn. Knight a5 defending, and now comes knight to d2, adding another attacker to the, sorry, to the b3 pawn. Uh, and after rook f to d8, now attacking the d4 pawn, uh, you can simply capture it. Uh, knight captures, and now queen captures on b3, but now queen captures on d4, with the idea that if queen captures on b7, then queen captures on d3. Uh, and after rook b to d1, uh, you simply go queen back to a7, and uh, the material on the board is equal, the position is equal, uh, all is well for both white and black. Uh, so after queen to d2, Fisher doesn't go for this b3, rather he uh, immediately goes for the exchanges. Uh, we have knight captures, knight captures, queen captures, and now rook captures on b4. Queen to d7, uh, and now comes queen to e3. Uh, we have rook to, rook to d8, attacking uh, Spassky's bishop on d3, uh, and now rook to b1, Spassky uh, offers uh, all of the exchanges. So Fisher accepts, ro uh, queen captures on d3, queen captures, rook captures queen, rook captures bishop, and now g5. Uh, making some room for the king so Fisher doesn't get checkmated. Uh, rook to b8 checks, Spassky exchanges yet another rook, rook captures, rook captures, and now king g7. And uh, as you can see, four pawns each on the king side, uh, a, a rook each, this is uh, now a completely drawn endgame, uh, but a few more moves were played, f3, rook d2, uh, we have h4, and now comes h6, and h captures on g5. And here, without recapturing on g5, this is only move 29. Um, it was actually uh, Fisher who offered a draw, and Spassky uh, accepted the draw offer. So, uh, not, not perhaps uh, the greatest showing with the white pieces from Spassky, but he does have to bounce back and uh, uh, figure out how, how he wants to proceed in this match, and... Uh, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps uh, more rest will, will do him good. So yeah, uh, this was game 9 of the 1972 World Chess Championship match between uh, Robert James Fisher and Boris Vasilievich Spassky. Uh, 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 now uh, as game 9 was played, so out of the 7 games uh, that were played, uh, 3 games were drawn and 4 games were won by Fisher. So it seems like after that uh, one game that uh, Spassky won, uh, it is definitely uh, all Fisher this entire match. Uh, but uh, there are still more games to this match, and there are many more interesting turnarounds. So, you know, stay tuned, and uh, we're just going to uh, have to keep increasing our, our vast knowledge. Uh, I, I would like to thank Danny McCullough, uh, Duras Press, uh, Dominic Comtois, uh, Nicholas Rhodes, and Chris Picard for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon with... Uh, continuing the Bobby Fisher story, but also I will check up on some of your own suggestions. Uh, have an excellent rest of the Saturday, and uh, I will see you soon.